సో ఐ వుడ్ బోత్ ఆఫ్ యూ అంటే ఈ ఇయర్ ఇస్తున్న వాళ్ళు నెక్స్ట్ ఇయర్ ఇస్తున్న వాళ్ళు ఇద్దరికి చెప్తా సో ద థింగ్ ఈస్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ వన్ పీపుల్ యూ జస్ట్ హ్యావ్ సెవెంటీ డేస్ సో యూ నీడ్ టు యూటిలైజ్ ఇట్ ప్రాపర్లీ వాట్ ఎవర్ యూ డూ ఐ డోంట్ నో బట్ యూ నీడ్ టు కంప్లీట్ ఫిఫ్టీ టెస్ట్ సిరీస్ ఆఫ్ ఫిలిమ్స్ ఐ డోంట్ నో హౌ గుడ్ యూ డూ యూ విల్ టేక్ వన్ డే లీవ్ ఆర్ ఆఫ్టర్ దట్ యూ విల్ బి డూయింగ్ ఐ డో నాట్ నో బట్ యూ నీడ్ టు కంప్లీట్ ఫిఫ్టీ టెస్ట్ ఎలా అయినా సరే చేయాలి ఓకేనా దిస్ ఈస్ ద స్ట్రాటజీ ఫర్ ఫిలిమ్స్ యాజ్ యాజ్ ఆఫ్ నో ఫర్ యూ అండ్ కమింగ్ టు నెక్స్ట్ ఇయర్ స్టూడెంట్స్ యువర్ మెయిన్ ఫోకస్ నీడ్స్ టు బి మెయిన్స్ బికాస్ మెయిన్స్ ఈస్ ద ఓవర్ ఆల్ గేమ్ in this whole mains prelims mains and interview all of you are aware with what kind of exam it is right so uh, my strategy would be like you need to write at least 400 questions of answer writing practice before you appear to prelims as this is not possible to people who are now going to i mean 2021 inter- i mean prelims so definitely people who are uh, i mean aiming for next year they need to at least assure that you need to write at least 400 questions so that there is a practice which you would be doing on okay this is my overall uh, thing which i want to say and uh, coming to how to prepare and how to strategize if you have any kind of specific questions i i am very much obliged to answer them so any of you want to have any one have any personal question or anything like strategy or something specific i would definitely answer i mean what to do so if anyone wants to ask anything i mean uh, you have the date right on day okay fine so let me emphasize this first uh, you need to weigh on a particular i mean optional first you need to complete optional as much as possible at least i mean for example those people who are attending in 2022 what is the i mean when is the prelims any idea of month when it would be conducting okay let us assume that it is in june and july your uh, overall preparation for mains needs to be completed by december from jan onwards you need to be just once revising your mains and starting your prelims pre- uh, i mean what preparation so that the five months five months are enough for prelims to crack so but before that you need to complete with your mains and by mains what i mean see in mains now there are topics specific topics which are given in the syllabus and portions comes exactly according to the i mean the chronology also is it exact i mean if they are written as center and state relations federal relations in first point the first question would be from uh, uh, federal relations only so you need to keep this in mind you need to prepare prepare hard but it needs to be aligned with overall topics strategy you need to see whether you are going in the right direction or not and uh, from where should i study these kind of uh, general doubts are, uh, doubts appear in mind right see one thing is you could study from wherever it is possible but the thing is you need to know how could i utilize this in the real exam uh, i would give you an familiar analogy that you could correlate with you all have watched bahubali right bahubali movie there is a war sequence in bahubali in which pravas takes off that uh, uh, that carpet and he utilizes to fire those people right so when he takes off the carpet nazar sees that why he is taking the carpet but prabhas exactly knows how to utilize it in the in the main war so similarly whatever data you would be conducting whatever points you would be collecting at this point of time you need to know like i would be utilizing them properly at the real exam let me give you an example for example i have uh, some data regarding ncrb data ncrb means national crime reports bureau it says that every year 7% of women crimes are increasing at a rate of 7% which shows that there is a deterioration of uh, i mean uh, women empowerment in india so whenever there is in, in society part in gs paper 1 in society topic whenever there comes a question on women asking about women empowerment and this kind of thing you need to exactly know i would be mentioning this point with the data itself yes and you also need to know like uh, in parliament women participation is 14% and our population of women is 48 percentage so you need to exactly write that from adr data uh, our part, parliament participation is only 14 percentage how can they represent this many of women this would add the value to your point right so wherever you collect this kind of data for example i would be having this kind of data some other stopper would be having some other kind of data but he knows exactly what he needs to use so similar strategy you also need to have maintain a separate notebook for data also and see that uh, wh- how you could utilize this data in the real exam so all your energies needs to be focused upon clearing this exam this exam is a not a test of your knowledge keep it clear in your mind how much ever knowledgeable you are if you are not presenting in the exam you are failure and let me remind you the mains is a 4 hour exam but it is conducted in 3 hours you are understanding what i am saying what you have to write is a 4 hours lengthy exam but it is the time given to you is only 3 hours so you would not be having a time to uh, even think about what what you need to write so in this regard what you need to develop you need to develop muscle memory what is called as muscle memory 
like if some question appears you need to be writing it without even your mind need to work your your hand knows what you need to write if i have to give my example i used to write that much that uh, while i was sleeping i used to feel pens in, pen inside my hand i mean i used to sense it so that kind of practice you need to do that there builds a memory that you would be writing it without stopping without thinking about anything if it if it is given about any kind of data for example what is the water resources crisis you would be saying that yeah per capita availability of water was this much 18000 cubic meters in once upon a time but now it is 1500 i mean 15000 cubic meters only all these are datas which you need to utilize in the uh, overall exam so you need to align this accordingly and coming to prelims prelims is such a game where they test your alertness mainly are you alert in the exam or are you just going with the flow and your overall understanding of the subject what do you know they would be giving you three options they would be interchanging this first option and third option if you see any kind of question what they are checking basically there are few pitfalls for it four pitfalls and you are avoiding those pitfalls correctly and you are crossing the line to the uh, to the right answer or not this is actually what they see in prelims so uh, my strategy would be to prelims is read the question paper as soon as possible as fast as possible i mean those 100 questions are given right you need to complete reading them in one and uh, 100 1 uh, hour 20 minutes at least at least this is i mean you need to complete it and that 40 minutes needs to be to avoiding the pitfalls i mean whatever question you do not know you need to look constantly and see that whether i am going wrong or whether i am not alert or not because many of times in the tension you know i mean if suppose in on 4th july your prelims is there the same paper would be appearing easy on 5th july which appeared difficult on 4th july it will be appearing uh, easy on 5th july what, what are you understanding from it it shows that your mind is playing games with you on 4th july so that's the real game where you need to where you need to be very much alert you need to be alert you need to be confident and overall uh, i mean uh, depth of the subject needs to be there that's that's on the back of the mind but what needs to be there is a uh, specific bullet points and practice okay so any other uh, other kind of doubts regarding uh, any other thing you want to ask it's not necessary it's mandatory it's it's like compulsory i mean you cannot go to the mains by thinking that i would be knowing i mean it's back in my mind i would be just reflecting in the in the main exam hall no 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 don't do that mistake i mean not even the intelligent person would be can be doing that because the main reason being vastness of the subject it's too vast it's too vast that in every each and every topic there would be sub topics for which you need to again gather points and these points you need to again and again again and again revisit i, I have, like i have said your hand also need to practice writing them so that at the main exam there should not be any kind of i mean you should not stop and think like what could be the answer because your side person would be writing it and completion of the paper is mandatory you should not leave without completing the paper and that doesn't mean that you would be writing whatever it comes to your mind at the point of time it needs to be trained practice so you need to uh, complete the drill in, in i mean while you are studying in your study rooms or room see i used to read newspaper but i think uh, uh, it would be better if you uh, catch some channel uh, some some new, i mean those people who cover current da daily current affairs this would be a good strategy i used to take a notebook i used to write uh, every day daily current affairs because next day when again i would be writing this current affairs i would be flipping on the papers so it's like i am revising it again so again next day in, and third day i would be flip flipping three papers so again revision is done right so this kind of strategy would be keeping current affairs on your tips if not you would be visiting them once in a while it would not reside in your mind so make sure that you are writing them daily and again while you are flipping you are just skimming through the current affairs what are happening and also see how what kind of questions are they are framing for example today ramappa temple has got world heritage site list right the question won't be what is the latest edition or uh, specifics of ramappa temple they do not ask because every year one or two world heritage sites would be coming right but they will ask what are the institutions involved with it for example for example if you have read today's news you would have come about an term called as icomos international council of uh, monuments and sites right so they would give you a question like icomos is an intergovernmental organization which refers uh, monuments to the world heritage committee this this one would be one one question and after that they would be giving that india has uh, cultural 
and uh, I mean what natural heritage is, but no mixed heritage. This would be one sentence, and third sentence would be some something else, which which wants to test your mental fatigue. Okay, because in first option which I have given, it is not an intergovernmental organization. Anyone wants to answer? What is it? ICOMOS. Today only it, it, it appeared in newspaper. It's not an intergovernmental organization. It's an NGO, non-governmental organization, right? So at that point of time only, you have kept one, one question as a wrong answer. You're understanding what I'm saying, right? So you need to be very alert. What kind of terms he is using in the question specifically while depicting some, some kind of statement. So this needs to be your strategy. You need to be very alert and it comes only by practice. It's not like I would be giving you a magic pill and you would be eating it and you would be performing well. It doesn't happen that way. Definitely practice is the key. Any other specific things you want to ask me regarding this, regarding any stage? If you people are practicing, I hope you would be getting some kind of doubts. So is it's actually uh, you're having a clay, a clay in your hand. Okay. They would be asking you some question. So you need to mold your clay according to the question and adopt and give it to them. Then they would award you marks. The examination is actually like this. But to mold that clay, you need to have a prior practice how to mold it. I, I hope I have made it very clear to you. If uh, you have any kind of specific questions, you could uh, definitely ask. Do as many mistakes as possible. Okay. Uh, you have uh, you have to do 50 tests. Uh, 50 tests. So you do not have any other option. So do 50 tests and do uh, one, I mean, 250 mistakes. So you would be learning 250 uh, things now. This is NGO, this is everything. So some kind of alertness would be building in your mind. Not the exact question would be replicating in your exam, but such kind of question you would be more alert. Okay, this I have done, uh, I mean, wrong in my practice test. So now I, I need to be careful. You're understanding it, right? And uh, for those people who are writing this year uh, prelims, I want you to do reverse engineering. I hope you understand what is meant by reverse engineering. It's like first you need to solve the pra uh, practice test. After that, you need to make it notes out of it. You need to write them in bullet points and write everything where you are going, uh, uh, where you are doing mistakes. Okay. For next year, I would uh, like you to uh, take five months specifically for, for prelims practice. Okay. From Feb onwards, if, if, if it is okay from Feb onwards, uh, you do uh, only for prelims, just touching upon mains once upon a time. Any other specific doubts uh, regarding anything which you are, you, which you might be facing difficulty, how to handle stress or any any other thing, any, anything you could ask. See, you need to prepare uh, very very seriously. If not, it's it's not going to happen. So you need to be uh, if you are preparing seriously, definitely doubts would be coming to you. So you could ask me. It's not like uh, I might be looking very serious, but I'm not that serious. So. Could, uh, you could definitely ask. General overview of optional is similar to mains only, uh, I mean what GS only, but what you need to do is you need to be specific with uh, the terms which are mentioned. Optional is like you are uh, giving some eateries to, to the people who are checking. In that eateries, these terms are like cookies you are giving them. He would be becoming, uh, he will become happy if you present that kind of terms. Terms in, in the sense, what are the terms which are very much specific to your optional? For example, in uh, political sense, the terms like geostrategy, geopolitics, geoeconomics, strategic depth, these kind of terms are there, right? And also, you need to uh, be very thorough with the others who have given these kind of terms and all. And the views which you, need, you want to write, you need to specifically mention whose views you are mentioning in that point of view. Okay? So this would definitely add brownie points. You should not write optional as a mains paper where you would be giving only your recommendations but recommendations of the people who have done several research on that topic. You're understanding it, right? The, like political science or anthropology, there are several anthropologists who have conducted a research for overall a long period of time. So you need to give credit to everyone. Like this guy has said this, accordingly this is wrong, so we need to go by this. This has been propounded by this person. These kind of things you need to give. For example, political science, uh, international relations part is there, right? In that you need to take few names. For example, Happy Man Jacob, C. Raja Mohan, you need to quote them. For example, in the Afghanistan issue, they would be asking what are the uh, what are the likely implications, and uh, if they could stop there also, you need to give solutions beyond what India could do. Like C. Raja Mohan has said that we need to, uh, I mean, talk to the Taliban's who are Pashtuns in their nature, or you could uh, give other options like uh, this guy has said like this, and if not, this person has said like India needs to go and offensive capability development in Afghanistan. 
this kind of things so i think that this is the right strategy so we need to go with it because india has to secure its interest in afghanistan done and the format of answer writing i hope all of you know that right you need to abide by the format you should not write as i mean whatever you know you need to print the model answer format exactly in your answer sheet if you want to secure some place you need to print it i do not know how you would do but you need to do you need to come with the introduction you need to come with the subheadings and points and then way forward and conclusion done in every answer you need to do history okay so history is divided into several parts for example ancient and you need to remember that uh, a lot of questions do not come in ancient part from ancient itself they uh, specifically emphasize upon a few things like buddhism jainism after that they go on cultural part more so i have i have studied from uh, tamil nadu textbook is there right ncert i have made a full notes of it i do not know initially so i have made full notes of the entire textbook but uh, you should not make it you just emphasize upon the cultural part specifically they have allotted a cultural part in the textbooks so you make notes out of it whatever cultural happenings have happened in harsha or happened in any other part like the i mean the development of temples would be explained there how it has been developed here how dravidian uh, temple architecture is being developed in further places what extension have been done in this regard so you would be knowing it okay so uh, prepare a notes from it from the tamil nadu ncert textbook this is for ancient coming to modern history there are two major books one is spectrum i hope you all are aware with what is spectrum and another one is bipin chandra i think if anyone uh, lacks any kind of foundation in ncert they could definitely uh, sorry in, in history they could definitely visit ncert is once again and prepare a notes actually i have prepared notes from ncert they are very beautiful uh, you would be uh, lucidly understanding what each and everything what whoever has done anything because they are explaining to the children right so you would be explain you would be explained better by that this is coming to modern history coming to world history i do not think you need to emphasize much just cover whatever portions are present in the syllabus decolonization american revolution french revolution and uh, other other topics are there no broad headings you need to know you need to have a notes of your own my notes was this much thin this much uh, thin uh, it used to contain all these things and i used to revise from them but uh, no question appeared this time so cost benefit analysis also you need to do for world history and post independence you could read if you have time and if you are appearing for next year you could read from uh, that uh, bipin chandra only uh, like there is a book right post independence india that you could read if you do not have a time if you are uh, lacking in time you could uh, definitely go with visions uh, that module would be there post independence it is only 40 pages uh, length i think so so you could go with that, that also your history is done anything i left in history part i do not think so art and culture see uh, they suggest nitin singhania but i think nitin singhania is this huge book you would be bored you would be frustrated by completing it so uh, uh, rather investing time in it you could go with spectrum multiple readings of spectrum because cost on returns would be uh, i mean investment on returns would be more in that so you could go with spectrum and if time permits for deeper understanding you could go with bipin chandra also okay history is done ethics i think to stand apart in ethics you need to practice more and uh, that needs to be uh, i do not suggest any kind of book in this regard because what happens is books uh, many people would be coming reading that uh, lexicon and g subbarao and they are very much lengthy books they are like textual knowledge of ethics i do not think so textual knowledge would be sufficing uh, what you need to develop is uh, some kind of quotes regarding any kind of i mean if uh, they are asking about compassion you need to have a quote which would be directly depicting what compassion means means okay and also three examples of compassion itself like recently if ratan tata has did something you could show it as an compassion thing if someone has done something you could show that also and if they are asking tolerance you could say agreeing to the opposite view or respecting the opposite view it needs to be simple and it needs to be sufficed with examples lot and lots of examples Uh, in ethics you need to write examples and they need to be pre handedly prepared science and technology i think now as uh, the, uh, covid has uh, recently passed right so we need to emphasize upon biology uh, the biology textbook of i mean uh, the ncert 12th class it is there no 11th and 12th class they would be lucidly explaining you concepts like rna dna so after knowing this basics you need to go further 
what is genome sequencing what is genome ha huh? why this is only a rna virus why is, why it is not a dna virus so you need to have an overall objective of, of this uh, subject because science and tech questions would be confusing they would be asking rna interface they would be uh, the question would be simple but they would be confusing you just so to to have alertness you need to know it specifically so complete the biology part uh, from uh, basics from ncert after that go in search of it and also there are new disruptive technologies which are coming in place for example iot internet of things things okay so you all are ever uh, i mean aware about iot right are you okay 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 i will i will come to geography also okay so so you need to be aware about these kind of disruptive technologies which are coming virtual reality okay augmented reality uh, this iot blockchain technology ai machine learning all these things you need to know in a lucid format for example now our computers and mobiles are connecting to the internet but what if our washing machine our fridge and our uh, ac everything is connected to the internet and they are operating with each other this is called internet of things so easy right so you need to know what is what is this i mean like in a lucid format and uh, i i hope uh, science and technology is completed because do not rely on any book for science and technology just basic ncerts after that go on searching in internet because i know all of you have done your graduation probably from through engineering probably so you would be well aware of technology if not also no problem just go and search and write each and everything like iot this is iot these are the implications so know a basic thing okay and uh, coming to geography i think ncerts are uh, most beautiful source of geography you need to complete ncerts any cost because for geography and uh, for economy 11th class ncert would be there that that is required so th there are few subjects for which ncerts are must so geography is one such after that uh, you could go through uh, go to uh, gc leon you have heard about a book called gc leon right so you need to go through it and uh, you need to uh, do it also for physical geography after that you need to take care of whatever places are in news for example recently kaveri i mean kaveri dispute and uh, this krishna dispute have also happened right you need to know what are the tributaries what are the uh, states it is passing through and if at all any kind of monuments are present nearby that uh, passage for example one of the uh, tributary of uh, uh, krishna is tungabhadra and tungabhadra has hampi in its uh, i mean tributary in its border so there have been a question from hampi so you need to go in little bit depth you need to have curiosity but that curiosity needs to be aligned with our exam this is the main thing he would be testing is this candidate having curiosity or not and that curiosity needs to be with aligned with our exam not going uh, some other direction okay this is done for geography similar is uh, i mean uh, for environment also you need to combine geography and environment while you are reading for example in environment they would be asking more and more about national parks more and more about wildlife sanctuaries and uh, these kind of things threatened species and everything so i do not think you need to go and uh, uh, i mean uh, start road learning all these kind of things whether i mean all the extinct species all the iucn species do not road learn it only specifically emphasis upon those those things which are coming in news because they would be coming in your option one or the other way then you could eliminate them okay this was already there in news uh, so i know according to it and you could eliminate it after that the question becomes little simpler to you okay this is regarding environment and uh, uh, i mean geography for environment you could also go with shankar is book it is also a beautiful source uh, the upgraded version it would be conducting i mean previous questions also so you could solve them and you could go further so this uh, is regarding geography and environment history is done so quality is a one subject where you could not neglect uh, lakshmikanth i have read lakshmikanth at least 17 times so you should you should know how many times you, you need to read so read it as many times as possible or prepare a short notes if it is required if you are not underlining if you are not comfortable with underlining just uh, uh, i mean write it down and read it read it again so emphasis upon the nitty gritties of the lakshmikanth like and or this will also be potential questions okay like they are giving four exemptions like uh, uh, caste color creed uh, gender they would be asking whether region is a, a exemption or not so you need to be very much specific about each and every term of lakshmikanth okay after that you need to write uh, whatever uh, current affairs are coming right you need to 
keep adding upon that. See, I have completed economic classroom teaching. Uh, that is one such I have benefited from. And 11th class book is there one, NCRT. That, it's not like macro or micro. It's like uh, yeah, Indian economic development. So that book is very much funny to read. And it's very good to give that overall brief about what is happening and all. So whenever you prepare notes also for, for mains also, you could prepare from this NCRT also, like basic definitions. What is infrastructure? What is fiscal deficit? Basic definitions could be prepared from NCRT also. So no need to shy that uh, these NCRTs are child, uh, I mean children book. Why should I should prepare notes from it? Just prepare it and use it whenever you want. Okay. I hope I have covered economics also. I think uh, mostly part is done. So any other thing you want to? ESAT is becoming, uh, uh, I mean, tough day by day. So you need to be very much alert. Not only those people who are from degree background, but people who are from engineering also. You could falter in CSAT. So definitely you need to practice. You need to practice very much. Uh, solve previous four years questions. Okay. And see where you are standing. Solve especially 2019 and 20 questions. And see are you, uh, I mean, going beyond 85 marks or not. If you are not be going beyond 84, just, just start preparing. If you are going beyond 85, that's enough, I think so. No need to specifically emphasize upon CSAT. But, but do not take it for granted because many people I have seen have faltered in, in CSAT. Okay. Uh, CSAT is done and uh, international relations I have already explained like uh, those people who are from other backgrounds, they just need to go through the newspapers and those people who are from, uh, I mean, political science, they need to go through some articles regarding foreign policy or diplomat or uh, project syndicate. These kind of websites, you could just go and see whatever article you are finding good, whatever, what is your liking and you could note that. So if it's not, not an ethics paper, you should not write a personal example anywhere. Uh, it is possible in essay somewhat, but uh, not in any GS or not in any, any optional. Okay. Only in ethics paper, you could definitely give personal. If it is very succinct, you should not write a, this much story for your, as your personal experience, only two to three lines that this has happened to me. I have reacted this way and this shows me this value. That's it. But in social issues, it's better to go with only popular examples. Like what is the popular data which is there? And what are the popular examples? For example, um, Gauri deaths or Sati. Sati have been lastly performed in 1983, recently in Rajasthan. There is a famous example. I have forgot her name. So you could utilize this name. Like recently also, till two decades back also, Sati have been performing. So you, you could utilize these kind of examples to show that, but you should not write like my, in my village, Sati is still going on. No, 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 no. They do not know your village and everything. So do not utilize that personal examples, but definitely you could use popular examples and popular data to, to just, I mean, give push to your point, what you're arguing about. Okay. Uh, any other, any other doubt? I think, uh, I do not know whether they are important not, or not, but I think they definitely will give you an edge. They sh should not be a flowery language, but definitely th that kind of spelling mistakes would irritate people. Those who are correcting, they would be thinking like, uh, Are you do civil sex on Adam Kochi, he is spelling rap on a parliament, the parliament and Rasan So this, this kind of things should not be there, right? So definitely avoid spelling mistake. I hope you all are grown up people. So spelling mistake is a no. And also, I, I also used to do initially wrongs because, I mean, I used to write for India, I used to write a small, a small I because all countries needs to be depicted with capital I. So I used to write small I. So you all know Akshay IPS, right? Uh, so he used to tell me like, you are writing small I, this is not good. So you need to write an, uh, I mean, capital I. After that, I have kept it in my mind. I have just subject, I mean, I have corrected myself. So you should definitely avoid spelling mistake and flow needs to be there. If, even if it is not flavory language, you could not write flavory language at all. But uh, the, the points need to be crisp and to the point without any spelling mistake. That's it. I have utilized secure. Uh, you all are aware about secure, right? Inside secure, there is an initiative called as Ins or Insights in India, secure. What I used to do is I used to read daily night. So while I used to go morning uh, at five o'clock to sleep, I used to write five answers and I used to go to sleep. So this was my daily habit. So what you could do is uh, there are many platforms. For example, uh, uh, IS Baba, I think so. TLP is there. TLP program is there. IS Baba and many other uh, internet sources have came upon who are posting daily five questions. 
so do not see about the quality of questions also whether they are aligned with uh, upsc or not that leave that also this is only to improve your practice it's like you are practicing anywhere like uh, you are practicing on gully cricket you are practicing on the ground you are practicing anywhere that you know how to handle whatever ball it might be so just practice after few days you could definitely go into some other thing like okay now i it is done i would be practicing upon previous questions let me practice upon these kind of questions so initially you need to whatever source you could you would be coming off your hands just start with do not stop whatever comes with your hand just start with it crawl initially walk later run after that okay but start okay so for prelims it's like you need to allot allot specific days for example uh, three months are uh, i mean uh, minimum required but you could suffice it with uh, in 70 days also so do not feel that no it's not three months how could i do no take it off from your mind 70 days are also uh, could be done but the main emphasis should be on practicing more more and more test papers for example if you are doing alternative in this month you would be completing 15 tests right next month you would you should be doing one test daily which would be uh, completing 30 tests so totally you have completed 45 tests and next month uh, till october october 10th you will be having 10 days in that at least 6 days complete two tests daily so you will be completing additionally 12 tests so i hope uh, i have how many i have completed 57 i think so or so, almost 60 you have completed so it gives a sense of confidence for you like how to go about it where i am faltering how could i feel alert on that moment so definitely through practice only it would be coming in so start practicing but people who are writing next year uh, just start uh, today only go and uh, chop out a plan for for main specially like how i would be completing by december my every portion needs to be completed notes needs to be readied and kept in my alarm that needs to be there i i mean monthly you could go but what i am saying would uh, benefit you more i think so if you are writing current affairs daily by listening to some there is a regime where uh, daily 7 o'clock or 9 o'clock you would be switching into some youtube channel you would be watching it and you would be writing daily it would build an habit and daily you would be revising it monthly magazine you would be reading you would be thinking in your back of your mind that yes i have understood everything that's it three days after i would be asking you anything you would not able to recollect immediately but if you are revising it daily no it would be on your fingertips while i was student like you only uh, one one selected officer have came and he, he has randomly asked few questions and i was able to answer all of them because they were on my fingertips all of them so that could give you an advantage uh, definitely so that's why go to one source and after uh, doing a research take 2 3 2 3 days time go through youtube and see which channel is providing you best that you are understanding them and comprehensible because see this is vastness you need to bring certainty in uncertain things right there there is lot of uncertainty regarding it but you need to stop somewhere you need to bring certainty that this much thing i would be completing and this would be i will putting effort effortlessly in exam so follow one youtube channel and follow it regularly your current affairs i think would be completed uh, it would be biased if i give you channel but i would definitely only ias is the channel but it it will be telling you in hindi so whoever knows hindi they could definitely uh, utilize it but uh, i have also followed rao's ias and other channels also so they keep uh, current affairs daily so you could definitely get prices is also there i think so so there are many many channels so whatever you like it's it's not an this is a good question for example if you are sitting here you would be going back to your rooms you would be eating okay you would be doing you are you would be lying this would be this would be your reality okay but if you are thinking about exam like what would happen this is imagination so this is generally said that a man suffers more in his imagination than in reality okay you are understanding my point right so this stress comes from worrying and if you see worrying goes in circles it means you are stopping where you have started it's not serving any purpose to you if it is adding any benefit to you you could definitely avoid stressing like okay this much stress i would be uh, having so, so that i could be passing this exam but it would be not uh, adding an, an iota of anything to you so i do not say that after listening to this you would be getting rid of your stress but it's like meditating you need to practice you need to reaffirm your mind that see this is my reality now i am sitting i am delivering a lecture to the people this is my reality nothing exceeding this is a reality right so meditation is what it's like present in that moment right so you need to practice it you need to give affirmation to your mind that uh, okay whatever happens i would be i would be 
capable of handling it but let me now concentrate upon what i am doing right now okay because let me be very clear the output is a function of many things it's not only that you are reading very well and you are writing you are qualifying this exam the output would be a function of many things right which are beyond your capability uh, beyond which you would be thinking so do not stress up upon the output just enjoy this journey then you would be rid of the stress i hope uh, i have i mean addressed all the queries because beyond this i think the boredom will uh, so if you have any other query you could ask me or i would handle it to ma'am so yeah actually i prepared it uh, after mains only but i used to have that positive mindset from the starting for example in ashoknagar we would be finding that people would definitely involve in political uh, debates after reading few pages of polity and politician comes inside us we would be at our chai chai places or some other place we would be involved in political debates like andhra telangana or some BD, uh, i mean bjp modi is some some other things right but they are you can't do anything about it okay so leave that okay so what was your question i forgot sorry ah so yeah so these kind of things would definitely involve your i mean affect your thought process also so do not indulge in these kind of things just focus like how you would be speaking as a bureaucrat he needs to be rational he needs to be empathetic these are the two qualities right he should not be political he should be politically neutral so this is also one quality so if initially onwards you are favoring one party or you are if you are talking illogically with emotions carried away by emotions definitely it would affect upon uh, your personality also and uh, i think personality test uh, it would be automatically done but you need to have a positive outlook only and one more example i want to give for example today we got uh, this ramappa temple unesco j j h test tag right it has specifically mentioned about sandbox technology which have been utilized right i am not a civil engineer so i i could not expect but who are from civil engineers they should definitely look upon what it is it is not asked in prelims it is not asked in mains but definitely in interview if you are a civil engineer definitely they will ask you are ramappa only got that uh, ji tag right they have utilized some specific technology what is the technology you would saying sandbox technology okay you are a civil engineer explain explain that to me you are understanding the implications right so how to go about the things where you need to uh, leave for prelims where you need to write for the mains and interview for example this example only icomos i have mentioned for prelims okay when in uh, cultural part it comes that we need to save our heritage then you could mention about this uh, cultural heritage tag and giving it to ramappa how it in increases the funding of the projects this thing they would not ask you directly but definitely you could bring a point to argue okay in third one the i mean the nitty gritty the sandbox technology could be asked to you i hope i am not going too fast this uh, this you need to take from everything whatever you coming upon you need to develop this kind of attitude to be very honest to be very real see uh, the toppers come here and they deliver a talk uh, of one hour so definitely they could not they would be telling you like i have studied i have got this and everything but definitely there are there would be days where they would also be unable to focus but it should not exceed a certain limit of time it's not like you are just in, in instead of in the time of playing you are studying and in the time of uh, studying you are playing it should not go this type daily you need to study for 10 hours that's it at least in the initial days you need to study for 10 hours for for uh, at least one year because the syllabus is so vast that there are neurological connections right in back of your mind for them to build also in those subjects you need to study regularly and this would happen only if you could study 5 hours at least for 6 months so but for cracking an exam which is very much competitive you need to study for 10 hours for one year so focus i think it is an uh, i mean sinusoidal wave kind of thing it would come it would go but uh, abide by the rule that i would be studying for 10 hours go with and discipline not uh, by your i mean your way of uh, focusing on things and be very positive only when you are positive you could uh, stay okay so this one is the last question okay because uh, ma'am uh, so daily uh, what i used to do was uh, i used to study uh, at night i mean i i thought that uh, at night the study hall is very spacious no one would be staying and staring at us so we could be sitting how much ever comfortably we want so i used to do that and at night i used to go by reading whatever topics i mean whatever schedule i have done for example current affairs i used to complete i used to write them after that i used to see whatever the topics have been taught in the class i used to look up on them after that i need to go i used to go for writing five i mean answers daily after that i need i used to go to sleep so definitely you need to feel short of time while you are preparing okay it should not be that okay today it is done 
you should feel that shit man i need to have some other time some more time to do these things okay that that feeling needs to be having in you i mean i am whatever you are doing so keeping ma'am uh, friend of me i could not speak actually so, so that is a problem for me 